think we're live on Facebook. I think we're live on Facebook too, yet there's still a status bar that's going I wish it actually made that noise. That would be quite fun as well. Well, you know, even I here today, we're part of the Red Direction team. Well, y'all know I am. And you all know Eva is. She's this wonderful person that's behind the scenes. And in February, not only have we already started the production of our podcast and the blog post and the informational trailer that is going to come out about the topic we're going to tell you about right now, we're excited to be telling you about it right now. In February, we're talking about assessing real opportunity or assess real opportunities. I'll be honest, in the moment, I may have forgotten the exact title for the theme that we're using, huh, Eva? Yeah, but both, both uh, <laughs> versions both. work quite well because maybe we should not limit ourselves to only one opportunity. Maybe Never. we should spread up and see several opportunities. And that's the thing, right? When we're talking about finding our true north, knowing where to go, when we know where we're strong, where we're weak, where we have threats and where the opportunities are in the landscape around us, it allows us to look at those along with our goals for our company and for our role. And together we can actually weed in or weed out, I guess, right? The what opportunity is gonna help us not only get to our goals, really utilize where we are as an individual and as we are as a company. Well, here's the thing with opportunities. I know why people have tendency to stay away from opportunities or multiple opportunities. They are afraid that they will uh, actually, that they will lose their focus Oh, and yeah, and with that, you know, and that, that's what happens in our brains, you know, like, oh, if I go for two or three, instead of just one, I'll lose my focus and I won't do neither of those opportunities. I'll, I'll miss the best one, you know, uh, but that's why we do need analysis oh, and that's we why we need to think about it because um, we should know when to focus on a couple of opportunities, when we should pursue them, and where, when should we go with just one? And mm. that's a tough job. It is. And when we only rely on our head, that thinking part of our brain, really, we end up with a couple of things. Our ego gets in the way, and we're wearing rose-colored glasses when we're evaluating and thinking about things. Yet, we also can then be too subjective, and we can be like, hey, we are going to just focus on where we're strong and then go with the flow. Or where we have most fun. Oh, yes. that. We, yeah, we can't forget that where we have the most fun. And man, you know, in the end, it's all about the data. It doesn't matter if we're having fun. If the data tells us it's not the place we should be focusing. It doesn't matter if it's hard. If the data tells us there, there's a different way because the way that we're going that's hard isn't working or getting the results we want, we get to use that data to make informed decisions. And then can we get out of our head enough to go, yeah, okay. So this is what we thought. We still have this goal. So what we thought wasn't working and we still have this goal. Now what? It's that space in between that allows for innovation, disruption. And that's actually where a lot of disruption comes from. Companies and people who are having fun part of the time, working real hard part of time, knowing there's a light at the end of the tunnel because they're making real change in the world. This concept of disruption. And just one more thing to add to that. That doesn't mean that not having just as much fun as you would expect means that you don't follow your passion. Right. I follow my passion every single day, yet there are times I'm like, really, I have to answer one more email? Really, today is just follow-up where I have to be in front of my computer because it's the part of my role that I do not like at all. Now, this part of being on my computer, I love, but the other parts, doing the reports, doing some, you know, pulling the information, doing deliverables for clients, making sure that we have all, everything in place for the retreats that are coming up, the retreats that are in process and the retreats that have just finished, for example, or the same for speaking engagements or facilitated trainings, right? All of those things have a process and I love doing them, but there are parts that I don't like as much. And guess what? As much as I would love to delegate them to Eva and the rest of the team, sometimes the buck stops right here. Oh, well, that happens <laughs> With to me. all of us. Right? That exactly. happens to all of us. But, you know, 
uh, knowing you and knowing you for many years, I know that you are always thorough on your analysis. And that's not the fun part. It's not the fun part. And it's actually the part that I like the least, but here's the thing. That analysis ahead of time. Okay, so we're gonna just use this real life example because really and honestly, that, that present retreat that I do every single week where I'm spending dedicated, protected time looking at where we've been, where we're at, what we're doing, what are the results of what we're doing? And then our goals that are coming in the next month, the quarter, the year, and aligning those or recognizing how unaligned they may be and then making some choices so that we're not always changing the goal. We're actually changing the way we're going to get to that goal. And that's not necessarily a fun part for me, but it does make in the, in the moment super clear. This is in, this is out. If we need to go that far. But here's the other thing that becomes super clear, Eva. With practice, you're even like this. So is everybody else on the team. They're like, well, based off of everything we're doing, here's what our idea, here's what the ideas are that align with where we're going. So we actually have a better communication as a team because of it. Yes, and when we do have better communication as a team, then we can together actually assess our opportunities. We're going back, we're circling back to the real opportunities. So we're in it together, we're on this journey together. And that's what assessing real opportunity means today. It's using the SWOT, the strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats, and your goals, and your soft skills, and your present retreats, all together to be these things that we can use and tie together each part of business that we need. And for those of you who are out there who are like me and love to read, I found an oldie but a goodie, the E-Myth Revisited. And in fact, uh, as I was preparing for this yesterday, it came to me. And so I was digging around in all of my books because I'm like, I know it's close and it's all bookmarked up. So I put it, it's in my best stack of books that I read on a regular basis and reference. It's about the technician, the entrepreneur, and the manager, and how we tend, each of us tends to be one of those in the role that we're in, yet what ends up happening is we need all of them. And that's what a SWAT can do combined with present retreat, combined with goal setting, and understanding the back and forth in that flow so that we can strengthen the other parts that we need to do our job well, be in our role well, and then show up so to allow others to do the same. Well said, I have nothing to add. (laughs) So that's it for today. This was our live stream introducing our topic, assessing real opportunity this for this month of February. So be on the lookout for our trailer for a blog post. And by the way, not only the podcast, but we will be putting out a poll and we will be asking for your stories and experiences because we want to put them all together and share from our community what has worked for you because we are always in an opportunity to learn from each other and spark an idea or grapple with a problem based off of something we can we can glean from somebody else until next time see ya